In this Star Wars Outlaws news update video, I will be sharing with you some brand new gameplay footage, as well as some new details that have been confirmed, and more. But before we do get into all of today's news though, make sure you do subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any future news updates on Star Wars Outlaws. And here's a quick message from today's sponsor, Instant Gaming. If you are looking for big discounts on the games you want, including Star Wars Outlaws, Instant Gaming is the place to pre-order them. Check them out using the link in the description. So here's something that's quite surprising about the game. The Ultimate Edition, so the most expensive version of Star Wars Outlaws, is actually the most pre-ordered version of the game in many different regions on PS5. That's right, the version that has been clowned on by the internet is actually the one that's selling the most. So you'll also find the game is the third most pre-ordered game just behind EAFC 25 and Black Ops 6 in most regions. Moving on to the new gameplay footage, which was revealed by Ubisoft late last night in two new trailers. The first trailer was focused on the four main planets in the game, and then the second trailer is a PC setting centric showcase which is really really well done and we now have a bunch more details about the PC version which I will get on to later but first let's go through the Galaxy teaser trailer. Whilst it missed out Canto Bite which is likely just going to be a smaller section of the game for the start and sort of ending rather than the true open world of the other planets, we do get to see new looks at Akiva, Tashara, Tatooine, and Kajimi. The video kicks off with Akiva and we get to see plenty of brand new shots of this tropical jungle planet. We have this cool day shot with a monkey lizard in the center and then this one of Kay walking through the market which is the main area of Akiva that I think we'll be able to visit and you can just see how dense this game is. There are so many assets, so many different assets it's raining whilst being sunny as well, which is not something that we always see in games. You can see how the rain has affected Kay, she is now wet, and honestly I am so excited to just visit Akiva and see what this market has in store for us. We get an exterior look of a cantina and we really get that jungle vibe going on here, it looks great. Inside the cantina we can see that it's completely different to the other cantinas that we've seen in the game, whether they're on Kajimi or Tashara or of course the Mos Eisley cantina. It's very, very different, which I really do appreciate. From the fruits to the green leaves and more, it's just really welcoming, I think. I'm looking forward to checking it out. We also get a look at some new creatures that are on Akiva. There is this central structure that we've seen in a few shots now, and that seems like it's going to be pretty interesting to go and explore. There is some sort of downed vehicle along this river here. Where Tashara is far more open because there aren't so many trees, this is a little bit more claustrophobic, I would say, potentially, because of the low-hanging trees, but still, it looks great. And we also have this shot overlooking parts of Akiva here, so there are plenty of trees, lots of green, and all these old ruins that have been shown so far give me Indiana Jones vibes. On to Tashara, and whilst we got all brand new shots, it was mostly of stuff that we've seen in either my gameplay that I shared with you over the past few weeks, or in previous gameplay trailers. However, what we did see that's new is a scout trooper on a speeder bike coming towards K. so that is new and confirmed and gonna be pretty interesting to come up against. All of these new shots though are still nice, I am very, very happy with how Tashara looks. It looks great. It's going to have some stunning sunsets, just like Tatooine. With a planet being so close in its orbit, it just has this looming presence in the skybox. And yeah, there's just something about it. I'm very much excited to spend more time on Tashara. I also want to call out this, what some people would think is a meteorite or a comet or something. What I believe this actually is, isn't a space rock, but rather a ship crashing to the ground. That is one of the random world events that you'll get in this game. You'll see a ship crashing and you can head on over to it in the open world and loot it, basically. A similar thing happened with Kijimi. We've already seen a lot of Kijimi so far and even though it's all new shots, it's mostly things that we've seen so far. But I also did want to call out this owl here, this one-eyed owl, which I saw in my gameplay demo, but this is cool up close shot of it. Now on to the planet that not many people are as excited to experience because they've been to Tatooine so many times, but at the same time, I don't think we've seen Tatooine done 
in this sort of level ever before. There was just so much density, so much stuff on screen. It's fantastic. This has the chance to be the most accurate representation of Mars Eisley outside of the films. We get to see a Stormtrooper on a do-back, which is really nice. I'm glad they've implemented this. Very happy to see that. We also get a cool shot of Jabba's palace at night, which isn't something we see very often, but there is a sort of time of day system in the game, whether it's actually a proper time of day system or it just changes based on as you progress through the game, that remains to be seen. However, it's still cool to see Jabba's palace in the evening. It's not a video of Tatooine without a stunning sunset, and this is what we have here. Out in the middle of nowhere, you've got the twin suns, sand, a moisture farm, and a ship in the distance. Just what you want to see. This building here reminds me of those that we see in the Book of Boba Fett or Obi-Wan Kenobi show, and it's got a bar, it's got a bunch of different NPCs that we haven't seen before in the game, so yeah, I'm very much looking forward to exploring I'm very much looking forward to exploring all of these different buildings. Here is Kay walking down the side of this sort of structure that's near a sand crawler. And another really cool shot is this of a Tusken Raider at a Tusken camp with a Banther. So we already knew that Banthers were in the game, but now we can actually see there will be Tusken Raider camps. How they will act towards Kay, I'm sure will be hostile. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that does work and what you can do at these camps. I also like this shot of Kay looking out into the desert of Tatooine. It's very vast, lots of Banthas, not much else there, but that's what you'd expect from parts of Tatooine. On to the second video, which features brand new gameplay footage, and this is the official PC gameplay trailer. Opening up with opening up with Jabba and Salacious Beakrum is just awesome. And then we get a look at the ray traced global illumination that's available in the game as an option for the PC version. Here is what is either an Imperial facility or space station probably facility. And we can see the troop carrier that was canonized through the Mandalorian on the right hand side. There is a snippet of footage showing off the ray traced reflections. And then there is a comparison with the game using dynamic illumination on and off. So you can see that the floor, for example, does receive correct illumination versus with it off. Another comparison is showed this time for the ray reconstruction technology that is also an optional feature in the game and you can see that the floor clearly looks more accurate and realistic to what it should be when it is on. The game will feature DLSS frame generation so we've got some of that in action here as well alongside Nvidia Reflex which I always make sure is on whenever a game supports it, make sure it's on plus boost because it really does lower the latency even if a game is still snappy and and we get this nice shot of combat happening on a Kiva. Even though we can't tell anything above 60 frames per second in a YouTube video, it's still cool that they are confirming that there is an uncapped frame rate, there will be high refresh rate options available using this shot of Kay riding her speeder through parts of Tashara. This video also reconfirms that there is optimization specifically done for the 14th generation of Intel CPUs because they have some sort of partnership with Intel. There is also CPU scaling performance options for Intel. Unsure what that means exactly or whether that's also going to be available across all CPUs. It does come with some new nice footage of the game though, showing off various parts that we haven't seen before. It's mostly Imperial themed, I think specifically in some sort of base, but it is cool to see the Empire and how they're acting within this game. A common question I have seen asked is, is this game by default 21 by 9 in aspect ratio? And yes, the game is a 21 by 9 game by default on console and PC. However, there is a 16 by 9 option as I'm showing you in my own gameplay. It's just that most of the footage Ubisoft have shown themselves is using the default 21 by 9 aspect ratio, even on console, but don't worry, there is an option to switch aspect ratio. That's just how they are stylizing the game from default, but you can toggle it off. And they show it off with the stunning landscapes of Akiva and Tashara. Wow, I cannot wait to explore every foot of this location. It's interesting that they've shown this low frame rate section of the game. I don't believe that is optimization issues. It's the fact that they're trying to show that, hey, if you have low frame rates, you're going to be able to completely customize your experience to make the game run smoother. Because from what I've played from the game, 
it's very smooth. So it was on a high-end PC, but still, it wasn't like this. And we get our first screenshots of the settings menu, which you can see here. For example, this is the advanced graphics sub section. So we have BVH quality, environment, reflection quality, fog blur, micro detail quality, particle quality, scatter density. And if you are familiar with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora on PC, it's effectively that same menu. I've played Outlaws, I went through the settings menu and it's effectively the exact same menu. It comes with all of the great graphics comparisons and settings that you'd want in a PC game. They have delivered the best PC settings menu of any Star Wars game. There is also a control screenshot as well as you can see on foot speed and Starship and it's not much because these are the controls you'd expect but nevertheless at least we do have a small tease of this menu. I do want to bring up that alongside this trailer they did announce the PC specs officially. So as I mentioned in the previous video, they already put them on the website, but they've now added more details. For example, it does say that you will need an upscaler to, to get this amount of quality with these specs, which isn't great. They definitely should have done it without the upscaler toggled on. They shouldn't have done this. It's a bad PR move for sure. Even though most of us are going to be using DLSS, I'm sure, but still, it's not a good look. I did say it in my hands-on preview video, but the game does not just support DLSS, it will also support XESS 1.3 and AMD FSR 3.0 with upscaling and frame generation support. So, some people have been wondering, is this because it's NVIDIA sponsored, is it just going to have DLSS? No, that's not the case, it will have XESS and FSR on top of DLSS 3.5 support. There is also multi-monitor and ultra-wide monitor support as you'd expect, uncapped frame rates and so much more. So it also confirms the game is 65 gigabytes. As I've been saying, that's great. They've managed to get it down pretty small in comparison to a lot of games these days and especially Jedi Survivor. It's effectively half the size of Jedi Survivor. And that doesn't mean the game is half the size in terms of length it takes to complete or content. That's not how games work. There are games that have far less content and are over 100 gig. There are some games that have a lot of content and just a few gigabytes. Games don't work how people think they do. Now on to the next piece of Star Wars Outlaws news. So it was just announced yesterday that MSI have partnered with Ubisoft to create this Star Wars Outlaws game bundle. So it's going to come with a PC case, cooler, power supply, incredible monitor, router, keyboard, mouse, all that sort of stuff. It's a major big upgrade bundle if you are looking to really get into PC gaming and it will come with the game for free. So that's the deal. We did just have Intel processors bringing the game for free as well, but this seems like it's going to be a much more expensive bundle based on all the stuff included. We don't have a price for it yet or any other details when it will be available, but they have announced it and I'm sure it will come out before the game releases. I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything I've talked about in this video, so please do let me know down in the comment section below and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future Star Wars Outlaws news updates. Drop a like to help support the channel, and if you didn't miss any of my previous videos, click on the playlist on screen right now, and I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.